All right, so, okay, all right. I'm bringing in the big guns, the other David, right. And you know, he's not a perfect person either, but Lena, I'm going to reaffirm the Davids are heaven-bound. All right, Bowie too, even though he's sometimes questionable. Uh, if you look back at his pictures, even, you get affected by it. Maybe he's a little bit talking about, but he's not. He's cool and everything's good. We got to move forward. That's why we kind of told Christopher we have to go forward with this this morning before we lose momentum. Jealousy, toxic jealousy. Everyone in your life that has been plotting against you has been toxically jealous of you. Green with envy. You gave Olivia a pair of green glasses because you heard that they were very good for headaches. Well, that could be true, but it's really all just power of the mind. I picked out those glasses for Olivia because she is and always has been so jealous of you. A beloved aunt who loves her. You, you did love that child. I, you love all children. You go in loving them, and then they don't give you any choice but to be repulsed by them. All the children you have known anyway. You, tr you were disgusted with Andrea and Theo, but you tried with them, and it was disastrous. She ended up attacking you. Attacking you. Mm -hmm. Sick little witch downstairs in the basement with a girlfriend's million little coven down there. You met them all. You met most of them, one time or another. Oh, well, when, when she ran into you with her fucking ugly fat little friend, that ugly fat pig, the one who took the, uh, oh, God, her and her mother, that demon witch uh, down in Ridgewood when they wanted, that one that we delivered that television set to. Hey, you guys, you better believe there was some interesting things about that television set. They affected your brain. Listen as I go. All right, Johnny. Remember in that little driveway that time with that little fat pig and Andrea and she said, oh, did you want to talk to me about something? Is there a problem? She was acting all brave in front of a fat, disgusting little friend, right? Then they went off together. <laughs> and I was, I, I just sat there like, what is she talking about? I was like, no, I don't want to talk to you about anything. Why would I want to talk to you? Mm. That's how de demented they th they think they're clever. They they don't have a prayer. You know, Lena, some people from the outer realms, they're the only ones that are coming to you and me for mercy today. Forget about who's down here. They don't have a prayer. I'll say it again, you don't have a prayer. All of you witting kids, all of you Horvath kids, all of you fucking Millie Billy kids, Billy kids. Oh, Jesus, that guy Bill. I know. He looks like, yeah, he looks like Satan. Walking around in his cowboy boots with that fucking hairdo and that, oh, God, he's so gross. Yeah. Supposed to be really good looking or something. Yeah. Hi, Sean. Don't get derailed, Mom. I'm not. They, you know, we, we were going to do, we were going to do a thing but with those Whittings and those kids and those assholes today, but instead we're going to focus on other things like Renee and her job as a census taker. Really? Yeah. When Renee, the mother, was working as a census taker. You were right, Lena. Right. She was just trying to do... You even said it to her. It's probably good for you to get out, and it's probably a good idea for you to get uh, ideas about what real people are like, because you don't know what real people... You never le lived a real life, worked a real job. So this is like your way of getting research done for your next acting job, maybe, if you ever try to do that again. Did you say that to her? I didn't say it in exactly those words, but I did, because I know she was a frustrated actress who just couldn't get a job because she was always too fat or not pretty enough. I know that's what it was, because I don't think she was a bad actress. She was a terrible actress. Really? Terrible. He's terrible, too. Steven, yeah. 
I'm better than Alec Baldwin. This is Sean Todd. Yeah, I'm better than Alec Baldwin. He comes home from the fucking, uh, uh, his gig, his two-minute gig on 30 Rock, two-second gig on 30 Rock, and he's crowing about how Alec Baldwin knows that I'm better than him. He knows that. Yeah, I couldn't believe that speech. Didn't it ever occur to you that he's completely, Stephen is completely insane? Hmm. He can fake being sane for a few minutes at a time, but not really for very long. Not for very long. Everything's like, right, 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 right. Right, yeah. Oh, that's fun, right. Yeah, and I noticed the last time I actually spoke to Olivia, like years ago, actually one-on-one, -on -one, she does act just like them. Yeah, it's all a put put-up job. She acts exactly like she. Well, what do you want? She's their clone, and they're her clone. They can't live without her, vice versa. They're like incubus, succubus, and all the rest. <laughs> What's crazy? Mm. And all manically jealous of you too, you know. To the point of good lord. And that's the thing, jealousy has no place in the new world, on the new earth. It must be vanquished, it must be killed. We must all be sincerely happy for each other and work at that. And make it, you know, a supportive environment for all. Jealousy is just not, not to be tolerated. And it's been so horrible toward you in your lifetime down there, Lena, that actually you've been an excellent radar for us. We have found, like, the roots of a lot of evil just through the associations that you have had down here with others. Lena, I know you're getting a little weary. We've been up since really 3.30 doing this stuff. I was going to say doing this crap, but you know what I mean, right? So, I'm ready to take a break if you are. Yes, I am. I think it's a very good idea to have some tea and take a nap. Go, go down for a couple of hours and come back and talk a little bit more on the planets like Mercury. Mercury, Freddy is relegated. Freddy is so highly evil that he is alone on planet Mercury. He's there alone. Really, yeah. That's where he went. That's what you did, Lena. I did that? Yeah, by putting that X through his face yesterday on his picture. But you didn't do it alone, you did it with Dad, John. You put the X on Freddy's picture and you put it in the garbage, recycling. Recycling, to be exact, Christopher took it to the recycling, right? It's That's where it belongs, but he's going to be recycled as dust. And that actually has been rescheduled. That's been rescheduled. Yeah, there's actually been a complete change in the plan. Because you and John viewed that last interview and that last video of him. Mm -hmm. Where he was completely unrepentant. Mm -hmm. He's in the black hole. He's not on Mercury anymore. He's not on Mercury. No, he's gone. Freddie Mercury is gone. Vanquished. Vanquished. And we don't question, we just know that it's been done. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a, a note to you guys down here that have been down there in the fucking... who still think you're alive. You're not alive. You don't have... If you don't... If Freddie Mercury, who made so many... Who brought so much happiness to people, including Lena with his music... If he can be vanquished because of his allegiance with Satan and and uh, jealousy and toxicity, mm -hmm. nastiness. General nastiness. Mm -hmm. Flamboyant hedonism. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen to you? <laughs> but you're going to suffer first. You're suffering now, but you're going to suffer more. All oh, yeah, you little actors. So what? So what did you want to say about Renee? I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> her reaction to these videos is really interesting to watch. 
Is it? Yeah, she's like a science project. It's really good. She has this OCD. She's very, oh boy, it's, pa it's a panic disorder, but it goes beyond that. And that's why she was unable to do that job anymore as a census taker. She was, she had it in her mind that she was going, that she was really researching a great play that she would write about making fun of people. She loved to make fun of people. They did that horrible play about Y2K. I mean, that's a nice one they, about, uh, about it being like musical chairs and everyone's running around. It, it, that was a hit. Right? Remember that? Yeah, I do. V vaguely. The, and I remember him like laughing about how great it was and talking about it like it was fantastic. Yeah, the Y2K thing. We And his parents financed it or something? Yeah. Like he asked them for money to finance this shit play that went nowhere. Well, that's all part of making a deal with the devil. Mm-hmm. You know, the devil is funny. Money comes, money goes, he lets it in there, you know, but then he really quickly pulls it away. So you'll notice that they would be riding high one minute in these expensive apartments, and then the next thing they're crawling back home to mommy and daddy. You've always kept a really pretty even keel, and the wealth is about to multiply dramatically for you, Johnny, Christopher, and the rest of us that are on God's side. We don't really even care. We're going to spread it just like the way you did with that little pony right over there. Yeah, the pony's my little friend. Mm. That's my baby. Mm. Look at my little baby. <laughs> Monty. <laughs> Hi, Monty. <laughs> She's got a ticket to ride, baby. She's got a pony to ride and she don't care. Do you, Lena? I care about you guys, my family. All right, she cares a little bit. I care a lot. All right, she cares a lot. <laughs> Lena, you have hair like that pony. I do, sometimes. <laughs> that pony's so cute. <laughs> Not time. All right. Nay, nay. 